Good morning, folks. We've got a story today that demonstrates a genuine connection between space weather and the highest risk heart patients. We hit the solar wind, stars, magnetic fields, and more after getting started here at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet, still no sunspots or solar flares. But overnight, the solar wind did intensify. Spotty data, but corroborated with SOHO solar wind, a surge in the plasma stream speed is evident this morning, and while the KP index shows nothing higher than 4, when the next one updates, it's likely to be red. Geomagnetic storm. The southern coronal hole system is the progenitor of that stream, and we've got the trailing portion of it still facing Earth today. Likely have a few days of elevated solar wind intensity ahead. Earthquake watch is peaking as well over the next 48 hours. Let's come to section 6.1 of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. I started that chapter with the most certain of studies and the most repeated and confirmed. Terminal arrhythmia, especially in those with ventricular dysfunction, it's a big risk during space weather events. Now this could be why. Normally we get electrical activity across the heart muscle, but in ventricular fibrillation, a vortex of electrical signals, an electric tornado in the heart, can stop it in an instant. Now at this time, the mechanistic connection is hypothesized here, but we know this type of issue has a major connection statistically to terminal outcomes during space weather, and we must only then ask if the electromagnetic forces of space weather are capable of affecting an electric tornado. Something tells me it can. Let's stick with a similar concept but on a slightly larger scale. It turns out that tons of molecular clouds in space are wrapped in helical magnetic fields. We see the fields coming at us on one side of the clouds and away from us on the other. This setup was expected to exist somewhere in the cosmos but it's looking like a pattern of the universe. Some quick looks here. An excellent although considerably complex paper on conductor connections between ionosphere and magnetosphere. Interesting means of coupling and induction. Interesting math suggesting that if something like a wormhole actually does exist, a vast transportation network across the cosmos, along with other exotic compact objects, could entirely eliminate the need for dark matter. Interesting concept. And lastly, folks, S02, the star circling the galactic center very closely, turns out not to have a binary and therefore makes the perfect test for Einstein's theories coming up later this year. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we've got a link directly to the Observing the Frontier conference videos popped on the homepage there. We've got five of the talks up there now, including both my and Dr. Dunning's look at health when it comes to space weather and cosmic rays. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, including a temperature by height and all school run I highly recommend you watch as well. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 525 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.